So this is week 11 of Finding Your Way. Um, Dale's going to jump into his recaps. <laughs> and then we're going to help him fine-tune his setup. Go for it, Dale. Take over. All right. So like I said, um, this was my, after, I think Monday was that holiday. So Tuesday, um, I decided to take this trade. I used thought I started trying to learn on Monday the breaker blocks and everything like that, like adding it with the fair value gap, stuff like that. So I tried to use it on this play. And it's actually, even though I saw two fair value gaps right here telling me, hey, look, listen, man, we're going to go down. Um, I tried to go against the grain and try to say, you know what, because this red line here is the previous hot. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're bouncing off the previous high, even though I have two great fair values, I have a breaker block here, which breaker block basically is you have to low the high, lower than the previous and higher than the previous. And usually you'll have what ends up happening is a bounce back and a rip. So for me, the catalyst was where I saw my RS, you know, my MACD curling up. I saw my RSI curling up. So I'm like, all right, that's good. I saw these volumes uh, so on the volume beat. I had green and these did not beat out. So I got into the trade and like I said, I played it on both sides, M and Q, N and Q. And that was the day where the market just ripped down. Um you know, I've blown up the account. And even though, like I said, it, right here was just basically screaming it out, like, hey, we're going down. I really, I was focusing on this. I didn't really pay attention, which I usually do is like to the 10 SMA to see where it was at, because that would have told me, hey, to wait a second. And, you know, so my mindset really wasn't there because I was trying to do the play out and I should have done this on a paper trade before actually trading it live. But that's the one thing that really got me off guard. Luckily, one was on MNQ, so it wasn't that bad. But the one on NQ, forget about it. So that was one of my trades. The NQ uh, blew the account. You didn't have a stop on it? I'm asking about stops on like every trade today because that's what I need to work on most. No, because what ends up happening... Um, and that's the thing. I sh I usually do have my stops. I usually place my stops, but I was switching in between accounts where, and that's the thing I gotta I I gotta just take it easy. Yeah. I was switching through. I thought I set up a stop, but I didn't. And the main thing I should have learned is I should have paid more attention to the NQ than the uh, MNQ because what ends up happening is when you like I create this block right here. I'm the one that created this block to call out the breaker block. So I'm looking at it and I had to go do the same thing back and forth. So I was doing it on MNQ and, and uh, MNQ. So I'm going back and forth trying to draw the lines because it does once you draw it, doesn't trying to populate the throughout the whole chart. It doesn't yeah. so what ended up happening, because this blue one up here too is another one from Monday. Even though I didn't play the market, I was looking at it and like I said, I'm watching the video. So I'm trying to like, okay learn the steps at the same time so this one was previous this big blue was another breaker block from the previous monday from that monday so i try to run that play and that like i said i've seen these two red fair values and i'm thinking you know what we're gonna bounce off the high and we're gonna go back up because it never broke it and as you see it held it even though it started breaking it here it came back and i should have known because i'm like looking at these wicks like okay I should have, but then when I saw like this try to hold and I took the play because of right here, thinking we were going to shoot, I should have seen the tennis. I, mean, I didn't even pay attention to it, and I know that was on me. So, and that thing just, it just rallied all the way down. So, that's how I was able to mess up one of the accounts. Mm -hmm. But that was that was the play for me. Like I said, everything looked everything looked good. I you know I don't know if it's I'm still going over the play in my head as I'm looking at this. Like, did I create something on my own? Or was there really a play there? You know, 
like I said, I, I saw the teeth squeeze co coming lower. I saw that the um, RSI was forming up, but I could have. I know one thing that I that, that does play in my head is when somebody says, "Hey, wait till it's on top of the fifty. I could have waited. You know, maybe if I if went on top of the fifty and held the fifty, I would have been all right. Or even if the MACD actually broke. Like, you know, because, uh, you know, Semper is usually saying, wait till it crosses. Wait till it crosses. And I didn't wait because I, I jumped the gun, basically. So, and that's how it ended up hurting. You, you'll get better at anticipating the crosses. You just got to, you know, keep honing that in. Um, and you'll get, you want it to be a little bit closer. That MACD is a little bit wide, but you, you still had seller volume and you had and you had remember the previous sell wave you want to pay attention to that because this mm -hmm. previous sell wave on the MACD is bigger than the current buy wave from here to here right yep 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 okay uh, so pay attention because that's telling you that sellers are still in control but if this blue wave right here if this blue wave right here would have beat out this wave, then the buyers taking control, and then you probably would have got the MACD cross right here. Okay, because then that would have been a smaller seller wave, and this buyer wave beat out that seller wave. That's another thing you got to be careful with. That's why you always got to look left. So, like, if this one was like right, there, it started going this way, then it probably buyers are still in control and it went up. But if it didn't and it kept going like this way, this way, oops. Uh, this way, this way, and it got bigger, then it probably was going to go down. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, besides that, like I said, I. That was the other trade that I took because after doing this, I didn't trade for the rest of the day. Um, the other trade that I did have, I took after hours. So this was after hours. Um, I, this was more now when I started playing ES because I told myself, you know what? I, that whole rest of the day, I had thought process, talking to myself, trying to figure out, you know, what I did. So I decided, like I said, pig energy, you know, things of that nature. So I decided to still go with ES because of the moves. And I was able to play this out well. And of course, you'll see my stop loss here because, because I didn't want the same thing that ended up happening. But actually, I was able to get, I think, 10 points off of it. So nice. it was actually good. My stop was actually a little above the 50 SMA. Mm -hmm. So that play actually worked out really well. Um, I did wait for confirmation in the sense where I wanted to wait for that curl off the... um off the 10 SMA. Mm -hmm. So, and that play worked out really well for me. And so, I think when I had this one, this was like, I think I put a gap there, but like I said, I didn't really pay that no mind. I just played it as I knew for the fair value gap and that worked out. And I mean, I did take other trades, but these other trades that they were green, they were shorts actually most of the time, stopping, trying to put in my head to stop at fair value gaps and not trying to go for the bottom wick because I'm losing focus on when, especially when there's a, a SMA in between. And that's usually like a pullback. And I think that's one of the things I'm focusing on. So if I'm if I definitely see a SMA within the fair value gaps, I'm changing my bias. I started waiting instead of waiting for uh for it to reach the bottom, just get out where the SMA is. Unless if the SMA is at the bottom then then I can use the exit target at the bottom of the fair value. Yep. Because you got to so, think, like I told the guy that asked the question, well, what level do I use? Whichever one is closest to price action. Yeah. You know, so if the SMA is above the fair value gap, then you might want to lock some in at the SMA. Like, let's just say, for instance, that this SMA was right here somehow you know like this then you might want to lock in right here 75 percent and then just put a trail stop move your either put your fishing order down here and then put a trail stop or just put a stop like somewhere above your break even 
Or below, I mean. Somewhere below the break even. I think that was it because I mean, no, I did take out the. I think for this day, they were mainly all shorts for that day. This was actually the continuation. Is this a continuation? No, this is a different different play. Um, no, actually, the beginning part of the play. And this is where we actually ended, I think, because. Oh, yeah, I took a short here, fought it, because this was the, the, the actual top. And then I took another short because it popped back up and the fair value got closed, but I used the trend line. And I was able to play the same play twice. So that's how it worked out because of, um, like I said, ES was much better for me. I can't do it. Yep, that's a rising wedge. That's a rising wedge uh, breakdown. And that's basically what I have. That's funny because that, that's a rising wedge breakdown, that bottom one. A lot of people would call that a bull flag. Wouldn't they? Kind of. You kind of see it right here, like. Like this. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I I don't really use those bull flags or whatever. I use rising wedge and falling wedges. Those have been laser lately. Like even right here, look. Here's a falling wedge. Oh uh, yeah. Uh huh. Another one right here, but it kind of went sideways and then it broke. But oh, you'll notice that they'll go from a rising wedge to a falling wedge. And all the way up. Yeah. But that's where the moving averages help, right? Because you have a, a falling wedge right here, and you have the 50 SMA right there. Perfect balance. I do see right here, though, that it follows that, and then this confirms my downside. Yep. Right there. Exactly. To play it down. Yeah. Yeah, I only care about. I've been noticing rising wedge since you know we probably shouldn't. I've been noticing that also the glorious W. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. The glorious W. Uh, the w is the shit and the uh, inverted head and shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the inverted head and shoulders. I think the bull flags and bear flags. Uh, that's like some of the most old school shit. It's probably mostly just traps at this point. Yeah, because they'll but, set up for a fresh little breakout, or they tend to. Those, yeah. those, those setups are what um, trading gurus use to lure in novice traders. Mm. <laughs> I think. Or naive traders. Sure. Yeah, naive. Yeah. Right. Guys, can you explain? I, I'm not using the value, the value gap strategy, but I, I would like to just have a general idea how you guys use it. And uh, it's because I see you use five minutes, you use one minute. Like, uh, what, what is the well, general idea? Because I, I look at it, I might as well understand it. Well, I use mainly the five minute and up. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, the one minute doesn't work too well for me. Um, if I do use the one minute, it's probably where just to get a, a, a better picture, but everything five and up to me, it's, it just makes it better. Um, I'll, like I said, from here, since I think I did use the one minute, but I got in at the five minute. And I think when I took the picture, it was because I was on the one minute because I just really wanted to see because what ends up happening is every chart gives a different, a different bias. The five minute will, will give me like, okay, we're going down. But then when I move to the one minute and I see this fair value gap, my, I have to question myself, okay, are we going down just to hit this to bounce back up? Like how many, how big of a move can I get? So then other things I start to put in my head, like which direction are we going? Are we going to be reversing? Like, are we in an uptrend? Yeah, reversing because now if we're mainly in an uptrend, I'm gonna see at least more these green fair values gaps as support. If we're so, on a so downtrend, these, but... these sorry to interrupt, but these no, green but... And, and, and red are they formed uh, uh like before or are they formed after? Like right now we see them, but at what point they get formed? Okay. So that, um... they get formed depending on the second candle. Okay. So let's see, like with this candle right here, you see you have the red. You see like this this uh candle right here. When there's a major drop, depending how big it is, the, if there's wicks, if there's no wicks, you won't really get a fair value. If there's a wick, 
And then the next candle, let's say it drops. The right. third candle after, it depends where you're going to get your fair value gap. Because what ends up happening, depending on the on the third candle, let's say right now the third candle only went up to this far. It could probably would have went up to the 50 SMH. The, but depending okay. where the candle closes is where the fair value gap will form. So now let's say if the candle... Yeah. See if I can annotate. Let's say if this candle actually closed up here, then the fair value gap will actually where we'll start, correct. I got you. Okay. And the same thing for the green, as you can see right here, they had the wick, the candle, and then wherever the next candle after, wherever this closes, that's where the fair value gap begins. Okay, so how does that help you? What does it does it, how do you use it to well basically the, give you the Well, for me, it's because of the wicks. Okay. The wicks, the wicks that are formed, like the um, like Sam said, there's a lot of buyers and sellers. So what ends up happening because there's liquidity in those wicks. So when something comes, when it comes down and then it forces its way down, when it starts to come, and it starts to bounce, this like when it starts to hit it, there's so much liquidity that it's going to continue. Like you have an attitude. The actual um. The move. Okay, so it, if it went down inside the green value gap and went back up to the red, this is where you take it short? Well, it depends. It, it all depends on what the market is giving. So let's say if it goes, like right now, let's say if this play continued and right, right here is where I would get out. Then usually sometimes uh -huh. what would end up happening is I've noticed like it'll come down to here, it'll create a wick, but then the next candle will start forming you know coming back up so right. in truth i can it could you can play it in both ways where you can play it coming down and then reverse to come back up but okay. sometimes it doesn't that it's just too much i'm not gonna lie I, I, during during the time we were paper trading i tried it it's too much so because what ends up happening is so much switching your your bias on long or short it's going to really mess up your thought process on the trade. Okay. So what ends up for me, the best thing for me, especially is when market opens, I usually wait till 945, 10 o'clock just to see what's going on because I can look in the morning, but then if there's so much, I'll look at every time candle. I start from 30 to see where we're at. Okay. I see a green, but then like, what was it yesterday? Because the market, the market dropped Tuesday and then it shot up Wednesday. So I'm like, okay, we're either up by it. So every green that I see, I can consider it support. If I see red, I'm unless we're going down, I'll see red as support and green as resistance. So it depends on the way the market is moving for that day. Hey, Luna, so, like, yeah, go ahead, you use a. The longer time frame fair value gaps are the always stronger, frame. always. Which thing that goes with any level that goes with yeah. moving average or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So what I tend to do yeah. is yeah. I'll look yeah. at the five, the 30 and the one hour to see if there's any fair value gaps. And if there's fair value gaps that line up on the 30 and the, and the one hour, and then I'll drop down, I'll mark the level off and I'll drop down to the five minute and see if there's a fair value gap that might, overlap that level and if it overlaps that level then that much stronger for it to go up or or whatever direction um, mm -hmm. i had a question on the previous picture which one uh the pre i think it was what the two more mm -hmm. ago. there's the first one actually yeah, let me just that's the first one the you first shared one. oh okay um this one right here is there, did you the, have any? Oh, uh, dang, it might have been the second. I thought it was the first one. Oh, on. been... so, hold on, Jaden. Jaden. This one right here? Yeah, but I, I no, need to No, it's not them, that so one either. On your phone but, but what am I, am I tripping? Did I just? This one? No. That one. Then no. this one? It was the one where uh, I meant that it was right before Luna asked his question about fair value gaps, I, I think. It was this uh, one right here. Okay. Um, 
Huh. And was it was it that do you remember the one um where you said you got in uh a little early on on yours trying to anticipate the cross? Yeah, this one was when I was trying to oh, do that was the this right here. This is the first okay. one right here. Okay. Oh, dang it. All right, I don't I don't I don't remember the content. It was yeah. I was basically what, asking what's the um <laughs> it was like it was like uh you were looking at it expecting like, like, like it seemed clear that it was that it was going to be going no, down. Oh, pop. I remember it was a picture with the, where we talked about the rising wedge that that looked like it could have been a bull flag. That was the one. Oh, uh, that one. Um, okay. that one was. Yeah, before I think this one right here. This one, right yeah, here. that right yes. there. So, uh, yeah. that, um, uh, wouldn't you? So, I, I would even think, why not wait for? And this might help my intuition a bit. Why not wait for um yeah, it to kind of get that. bounce yeah, off of maybe the fifty RSI that. and that fair value gap and the fifty SMA? This right here. Yeah. Do you have, well, have a picture of what happened? Like actually, afterwards? no, I don't okay. have a picture. Um, with this one, actually, what made me take this trade was because. Like I said, I knew we were we were getting weak because we were already at close to highs. So for me, I'm like already anything that happens after this, we're gonna go down. So could it have uh, once I saw it broke the trend line and I saw it retrace back, especially on the SMA, I'm like, okay, I know there's weakness. Like I said, I saw the yeah. RSI and the MACD already telling me, like, hey, we're exhausted. So for me, my I wanted to like I guess I wasn't looking for crazy points. I just wanted to get like, right up to the top right here, because I wasn't even reaching for this part. I wasn't reaching for a fair value gap tag. I was reaching more for a previous high tag. Okay. Okay, I understand. Um, all right, and then that leads into the second question of um. So some people say uh that uh, they think the fair value gaps will fill. And then uh, obviously when they're BPR, that's going to be a pivot point. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, where, how do you decide whether you think they're going to fail or bounce off really? Cause like uh, you could see, you could, you could maybe, could you make an argument for this trade trying to maybe get uh, yeah. three contracts on MES, maybe go five and take off, take off four at your target and then look for one to fill the fair value. I could, but my mindset, especially after that Tuesday trade, was still iffy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, depend. like I said, depending on where the market is, especially when I look at the daily, and I'm seeing it like, okay, we're already up high. Like, Tuesday was, I mean, Wednesday was uncanny. You've seen the way that it was rising. I think that's what ended up, that's why yeah, I that, that, Tuesday, that Wednesday, that's what made me even take this trade because I knew we were, like I said, we had already all these fair value gaps. So for me, we're on an uptrend. This is all support. So when I saw this and I actually saw it come down, create the fair value gap, I really wasn't going to get into the trade. And I'm like, you know what? On this bias, let me let me jump in. This is why I waited on the 15 minute and see what I can get, even if I can get to the 70. And I was able to hit it. And the only reason why is because so much, you know, we're on an uptrend. If we were on... A downtrend, and I okay, saw this. I probably would have played this. Time, uh, okay. Well, I most likely would have played this because to awesome. me, this it's not going to be. It's not going to be support. It's going to be more like resistance. Okay. So that's the only reason. Okay. And I'm still trying to get with the contracts. Like I said, from not last week, the week prior, I had a, a crazy week. And I'm just getting myself like on a mental aspect. You see, most of them I haven't done two or two, uh, two or three contracts. I'm only doing one contract, and because I want to build up my my self esteem again. And yeah. as I'm getting more confident on the trade, then I can see. Like I said, I usually do everything on a plan. Like okay, this week one contract, and if that failed, which well, I was failing on NQ, I had to step back and change the game plan. Okay, NQ is not working for me. Why isn't working? Well, I have this, I have this, I have this. It moves too fast. It doesn't work with my, you know, with the type of person I am. So 
I had to look up on ES and try ES, and that worked better for me. So those are the things that I got. I have to play in my head before even, if anything, I have to take a step back and then like test it out, basically. Right. Okay. Get green on the board. Get your confidence back. But you might, correct. you might, might have so played some of these longer with bigger me. size. Uh, correct. Okay. I would have played them longer, but as long as I'm confirming, like, okay. Because most of the times I could see a trade like today, there was a perfect bounce. When the market dropped, there was a perfect bounce off the fair value gap, and I had a fit. I could have yeah. jumped into the play, and I, I would have probably made a good 20 points on ES. But I'm like, really? you know, I have all these thoughts going through my head, so I just missed the play. I'm okay with it. It did work out. So at least now I know, like, to me, these little things now is helping my confidence because – I would I would normally if like my confidence was high, I would have just played it, but I had to dial it back. So I have to be more I have to be more humble. Yeah. Throw the sim up, you know, and just play it for fun. It's a problem. Yeah, see, but that's the thing. The problem is when I've realized because I when I was simming, I was taking every trade. And when you I've realized like when you're simming and you're taking trades to test out, it, when you actually become live, it becomes a high. So yeah. limit the trades, limit the trades regardless on sim and you know, sim for set it. Limit the trades regardless. If you're on sim, fine, take three or four. That's it. Even though if you see the play, it worked out great. At least you know your plan worked. So next time you do see it, you know you can take it. But as far as even trying to, if I hit my max trades and I see a play, sim or not, I'm not going to bother. No, that's totally a good mentality. I've, uh, Yep, I think uh, I've been having problems recently taking way too many trades. So that's uh, you know you're you're really driving a point home that uh, coincidentally I need. Um, and and you're right, you know you got all this green. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's great. I hope, I hope your confidence yeah. comes back for you. Well, no, well. thank you. I appreciate it. No, it will definitely. Like I said, this week has been it's been good. Monday. I mean, Tuesday was a was like I said, you know, I blew up account and it really hit home. But then I had to sit back and like really rethink, retalk to myself. And you know, like the one thing about finding your ways when I'm talking to myself is funny. I get little answers in my own head from Lasagna Cat from Semper. Like, well, you uh -huh. should have. You, you got to take it easy. You got to. You should look at this. You should look at that. It's funny how going through these weeks, and I'm doing my own recap, looking at these trades how little like reminders start pinging into your head oh yeah so yeah yeah definitely this is a quote from a book i read that's uh whether you like it or not everybody you ever meet has become a part of you correct and that's true yeah you start hearing their voice it is true yeah so definitely one thing for like if you have a number amount of trades you're going to take, let that be the number of trades. Either it be sim, either it be you know prop firm, just let that be the number, and then that's it. You know, if you do take an extra one, you have to have a consequence for it. Even though you came out green, you have to do something. Either I think what was it one time? Some percent do push-ups or go out for a run. Oh, dang, I took an extra trade. And it's just to keep yeah. you accountable for what it is that you do. Yeah, that's real shit. It's uh, it's the guy from uh, Naruto that uh, he's like yeah. running around the village a hundred times, and <laughs> and if I don't do that, then I because really self discipline is freedom. Like if you can't, if you're not in control, who is? Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, dude, if you have the discipline to go on a ten day fast, you should be good at this. I really should. The problem is, I. I uh I need the money like so see, it's like when you I'm need to get rid red, of that you you definitely need to dump that attitude I know, bro I know like, seriously. I know I don't know how I that's that's why I want to get because this is supposed to be uh well I wanted this to be my second income to pay down I got a lot of debt from helping family and uh and this is supposed to be the 
second job to pull that back. I think I just need to get a different in a second job that is that is, is a no risk, so I can get rid of that mindset. Because you're absolutely right. I I, I got to get rid of that. That's what's Cause... causing your your over trading and yeah. and forcing trades. You're absolutely right. And uh, when I go into the, that's why I'm asking about stops so much. When I go into the red, I just can't handle it. That's yeah. And you're probably bag holding, down. thinking, oh, it's going to reverse right here. It's going to reverse right here, and then it keeps going down or against you. It's like you damn right. Fuck! I should have fucking just stopped out where I said I was going to stop out. Yep, hundred mm-hmm. percent. I've been there, bro. Like, I've yeah. been there. I've seen that, and finally, I was like, yeah, you probably shouldn't be trading if you can't afford to to you know lose a coffee for fucking a week so that's like what 30 bucks if you can't afford that then you shouldn't you shouldn't be trading or at least over leveraging yourself yeah for sure i've got enough that i can like when apex goes on a 90 percent sale i can afford to to uh invest that Mm -hmm. um you know and then go for a uh you know, the oh, funded nice. is a little expensive. It's 160 for a lifetime. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, that's not all in all 200 bucks for a potential two grand payout. And it's like, I know yeah. I can get it. You know, I know this, this shit is figurable. You know, I, I know I'm not, I'm not done. I think anybody of an average or above intelligence can do this shit. You just have to create a system, create rules and stick to those rules uh, we always keep saying rules 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 like brandon that's all he always used to say like print them out and have them in front of you but yeah. the way that i discovered the best way to create those rules is ask questions like lasagna cat has on the discord is here's here's a list of rules because you ask yourself those questions and you you mentally answer those questions like like del just said you you hear lasagna cat or me in the back of your head um, answering your question yeah 100 percent. that's what i'm going to go into uh into into next week with no rush uh i don't you know don't care how much red or green the day is just take I got a little bit of impatience too. So, yeah. Uh, but whatever. I'm not going to. Like I said, set, set your max trades. Those trades will, you know, win, lose, or break even. That's it. Don't try to go for more because it's going to go against you. Easy has learned that the hard way when he's like, I made my goal. And then he's like, well, I'm going to keep trading into power hour. And then next thing you know, he gives profits back. And it's like, nah, dude, you uh-huh. should. Hit your goal, like me this week. I hit my weekly goal. I I took it slow today. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you have a you have a daily goal. You have a weekly goal. If you hit your weekly goal on Monday or Tuesday, fucking call it. Yeah. You don't need to be fucking taking more trades than you needed because you're working on consistency. You're not working to make more money. Once you got that consistency down and once you got that gut algo like Brandon, you got that gut algo fucking built in. Then you can do those trades, but for now, just yeah. focus, focus on consistency, mm-hmm. and, and and limiting your, you know, by having max trades is gonna help you be impatient. It's gonna make you picky on your entries. It's gonna make you picky on your trades, and you yeah. want to be boring. You want to be boring. You don't want to be fucking slot machine exciting. You know what I'm saying? You want to be boring. Re- like Lasagna Cat always says replicatable or uh, replicable and repeatable trades you don't want to fucking be like oh man why did i get in this trade you force a trade it's going to go against you yeah you know it's it's funny because when i go back to when i started finding my way and i've got the fair value gap and i realized the amount of trades i was taking on sim compared to being on this prop and the trades like it yeah, I really had to just like take it easy because like like Sam said, you know, you it's we all want to make the money, but if we if we let that guide us, oh we're done. We're done. Like I said, I I I passed the prop, I paid the money, and then I blew it up. I'm like, come on. Me too. Yeah, so that right there, that's where you gotta step. If you if I did that and I'm like, how old would I not let that happen the next time? Or again. How many, how many prop firms I'm gonna have to get to blow up to learn? Like, yo, you made your goals, you're done. 
walk away, let it go. Yeah. Yep, 100%. I feel that. I was actually at 52, uh, what I had two, two grand a profit on, on a PA, uh, like a month ago. Um, and then, and then blew that. And I was like, wow. It was just wow. Hey, and all you can say is wow. Go ahead. The, the, the yeah. good thing is, you guys know you guys can pass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You guys got that shit down. Now, Create a system to keep you consistent. Like I said, set like a monthly goal and break it down to a weekly goal. And you know, if you hit your monthly goal in your first week or two, then maybe take it easy on the next trades. Like drop down to MNQ if you want to continue trading, or or not even trade. Take a fucking vacation. Go concentrate on something else. Yeah, I think dropping down. I'm just gonna yeah. try to not even trade because actually I took what you said. That should be my chat. interest. Yeah. Um, uh, you, yeah. you said here's the formula. You're trying to make 75 bucks a trade. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Yes, it is. You can you can rack that up um, pretty pretty oh. safely, not even catching a whole move, just the meat of it. Yep. And 100. Um, percent And then so that's that's what I'm going for now. It's just those. I don't care if it takes me two months to get the payout. It's like the lifetime is paid. It's done. Yep. Um, so just just gotta rack that up. And I almost caught myself. Um, and I'll admit it. You know, and I don't. I almost didn't for a second. I was like, should I not say this? I don't want to make you think or feel like that's But when I saw uh, that you were what what one of your huge wins, I was like, you know. I almost FOMO'd when I yeah. because I was up more than my daily goal. I was up, I think, one thirty instead of seventy five, um, and uh, and I was like, maybe I can, you know, try to try to make that a nice two hundred. And then I'm like, why does why does it have to be a nice two hundred? Like, what the fuck does that? Mean? <laughs> <laughs> and and that's why that up. That's why I stopped posting P and Ls and stopped posting like. I'm gonna stop posting my trades. I'll I'll say I'm in a trade, and I'll I'll say, hey, I locked in twenty points or thirty points, whatever it is. But yeah. what I I used to post those screenshots of my plays, so you guys can try to. I want what my plan was. Okay, here's my screenshot. This is why. This is where I got in, and now you guys identify why I got in and yeah. ask me questions that was the purpose of that and i was like nah this is probably causing these guys fomo and it's like shit maybe i shouldn't do it no more because it's you know it's causing fomo and even if i post it in the in the brandon's mm -hmm. chat it's causing other people to fomo and probably taking bad trades when they shouldn't be and it's like don't focus on the pnl focus on the consistency the home runs Brandon always always used to he always used to emphasize base hits add up. The base hits add up. Yeah. Sooner or later, yeah, you'll hit one home run here and there. But guess what? The more you keep hitting base hits, base hits, base hits, later on you're gonna be hitting more home runs and more home runs and more home runs. That's the way this shit works. But concentrate on your strategy, your rules, and sticking to them. That's like the yeah. two main things you have to do and then let the home runs come in later. You know, it's like you're at batting practice. You're just, you're just hitting base hits, just learning to get on base. That's what you want to do. You just want to get on base for a potential to score, right? To go home. And as long as you could get on base, you have a chance to win. But if you're over there swinging for the fences, trying to hit a home run, you're going to get struck the out. Fences, trying to hit a home run. Yeah. 100%. It's only three bases before you get the run home, too. So, I mean, it's really like, and that's, that's how it is. I mean, if you've got four targets and, and you know, like it could, you're looking at the 50, the 100, the 200, you know, and you're like, it could go all the way to the 666. It's like, yeah. that's your home one. That's your home run right there. Yeah. But uh, all you need is five hits to the 50 and you're exactly. good. Or four hits to the 50. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. And, um, and actually, it does help a lot. That's actually exactly, uh, I don't know if you, that's what I've been doing with a lot of your screenshots being like, okay, he got in here. Why did he get in? And sometimes I'll be like, Holy hell. Like, how did you pick that bottom? Like I would have been scared to pick that bottom. Um, something like that or, or a top. And, uh, and, oh, and really you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to make a disclaimer. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's we are responsible with our own money and where everyone here is trading. But uh, if you, I like to, I find those useful and maybe a disclaimer being like, I'm already in. You should not get in. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just like, and if you don't know why I get in, shoot me a text. Like, why would you get in there? Maybe I was looking at a longer time frame fair value gap or a moving average or something, and I'll let you know what the answer is. Yeah. But I want you guys to, you notice how I, I say on the chat, I, I, I want to see the 50 SMA flat now, or I want to see the 200 flat now, or I'll say the 10 SMA looks strong. It looks weak or whatever it is. I'm trying to help you guys to, so you guys can self-identify all those characteristics or all those little things that I'm identifying for you guys. So like that, next time you, you guys are going to be in the chat fucking, Oh, look, the 10 SMA looks strong or the 50, like that play that you said, remember that you got in and it went long. And I was like, well, and I said, be careful because there's a volume profile. And then you're like, well, I'm, I'm in long. And I said, okay, well, you got the 50 SMA strong. Yes strong for you because it's pointed up mm -hmm. and it ended up going up right if the 50 yep. sma would have been more flat then it probably would have went against you yes i can't i don't remember i should have i didn't screenshot that one i should have um but there were other reasons i got in there i liked that trade i thought it was pretty confident but i guess you, I, I felt pretty confident in it but i guess you did not see the same thing no, well, I, uh, I did. I just wanted you to be cautious. Once I seen that 50 yes. SMA, I was like, oh, it's probably going to go his way. But I just want you to be aware because I don't know if you're red and trying to get back green or if you're green to have green. a cushion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're trying to hit, get another trade in. And I was like, just be careful. Don't force it is what I'm trying to trying to uh, tell you guys. 100 percent. No, I appreciate that. I I have no, you can't have pride, you know, or you shouldn't have it in this. So I'm trying, you know, I don't want to, I, I like crit criticisms, my favorite flavor of tea. And if you ever, you know, if I'm posting stuff and you think it's a bad trade, I'll please. I'll never yeah. say it's a bad trade. I'll identify stuff that to help you be like, okay. So like that, if the, if you see the 50 SMA, cause what if I tell you, okay, the 50 SMA looks strong, but then I step away from the computer. I want you to be able to identify, okay, the 50 SMA is starting to flatten out. Maybe I should think about stopping out or locking yeah. in profit. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to help you because, yeah, it seems like I'm at the computer a lot. <laughs> but there might be an instance where my kids pull me away and, I, hey, I tell you something and, and it goes against you. And I want you to be able to identify it before without me there. A hundred percent. I do. Um, it's like there's a lot of info flowing around here, and I do try to, especially since. Well, I'm saying I'm. I know I shouldn't. I got to get rid of the mindset, but here I am saying it again. It's like I really, getting a payout or two would, it would seriously help out. Um, yeah. so it's like I am kind of taking a lot of these. Like if if Brandon's really confident that 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 we're going long, like yeah, I'm probably gonna just take my bias long, but that doesn't. It's like that can work here and there, and but in the end, that's not really what I should be doing. No, nope. because actually, Wednesday or was it Thursday when we gapped up massively? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just gonna set. I'm gonna buy one mes here, and I'm gonna if it goes down, I'm buy another, and if it goes down ten more points, I'll buy. And I looked at how that, and I'm gonna come back at two p.m. and just see where it is because I think that's today's just gonna grind up all day. You know, you look at the chart some days, the five minute, and it's just there was no pullback. Yeah. And if I had done that, um, those MESs would have been like huge, like twenty, thirty point winners or something. But instead, I was much more cautious because uh, because I was just listening. Because when have you noticed when you're helping somebody, it's like they their brain turns off. They get they turn into follower mode. Yeah, yeah. That's I, that that won't work. I can't do that. I've so I understand there. what you're saying. I've been there, especially trying to follow Brandon. When Brandon can take, he can average down or average in like, you know, more than we can. Oh. Sure. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. Don't follow Brandon, but follow 
like not follow his advice, but take it with the grain of salt. You see the chart a different way than he does, just like I see the chart differently than you do. But I'm trying to help you use these indicators and how I identify these indicators to help you make your decision a little bit better. 100%. I mean, you guys are teachers. You know, it's like a, if you're trying if you're trying to learn to be a doctor. Yeah. Uh, you can't uh, you can't have a surgeon always, you know, over your shoulder uh, yep. telling you what to do because you're going to you're going to nick the artery. And it's yeah. just in, in trading, nicking the arteries, not having a stop and getting dunker doodled. Yep. Yep. All right. Cool. Um, did you want to recap a trade or two? Yeah. So I've got uh, two. Let's go on this first one here. Pull up my rationale. Long scalps. Odell, if you're still here, I'm going to steal. Uh, yeah, I think he recapped called? both of his already. It's even called screen recording, sharing it. Um, so there's a ton of crap here. Um, but let me go over to the one minute, and it kind of breaks down. So I got into this one here. I think I chased this, um, but. I thought it was going to come and break into the break above. This is actually, so this is a Keltner, but the 10 mm -hmm. is 10 SMA is basically in the middle of the Keltner. Yeah. Um, and we were very under, uh, we were under volume area lows, or we were about to be. So we were, this is over here, the translation of this spot to here. Mm -hmm. So really I should have waited for it to be under volume area lows, but also I think this volume area low might've recalculated. I'm yeah. pretty sure we were under it at the time. Um, the five minute RSI was getting into the cool, um, which is actually, yeah, five minute RSI was already cool. So that lines up with about, what, 10.05? So this time frame. So the five minute RSI had been cool for a little while. And all these fibs, this is like a lot of shit. But essentially, this hundred fib is uh, is a fib from a algo like just a run that had no pullback, just five. Mm -hmm. It was like twelve five minute candles, so I fibbed it out, and uh, this was the top of it. Um, so that's also kind of a point I was looking for, kind of maybe preemptive, thinking I was going to shy it. Yeah. But anyway, um, five was super cool. I was like, this is going to just bounce up aggressively randomly. And uh, and the one minute I felt was looking for a cross. Um, but yeah, I mean that's and then just went went in there, which ended up being too early. Took took profit, basically as soon as I started seeing some uh, trouble, and then kind of taking over trading here. But uh, I I didn't mind this one though. So this was the main trade that I think I just just got in too early. Yep. Um. And then I let's start there. Like, would you? What what would you have thought about this trade? Ah, I should have taken more to the left. Um. But do you think that this is a reasonable trade based on like the MACD, the RSI cool on the five minute? Yeah, but I would have waited for that MACD to cross, especially how fast that price action moved. So yeah. um, if waited you would have just waited right here, this one. The one minute. Okay. So if you would have just waited two minutes, you would you could have yeah. got in right here after the cross. Could have gone in afterward. You were probably trying to anticipate the cross, and I don't was. don't don't try to anticipate the cross until you got MACD lasered in, because, um, what I seen on one of the other charts it was diverging. I thought it. I thought it was this one. Uh, yeah, right there, right here. See how it's creating higher lows, and then yeah. even this one. Oops, sorry, I gotta use my mouse. 
Um, so right here. So it created a diverging right there. So, okay, start, start looking, right? And then wait for this one. It didn't break this, this, this higher, uh, this lower high or whatever. It still created a higher low. So it's still diverging right here. Not only okay. that, this little seller wave was beat out by this one. And then this seller wave couldn't beat out that one. Okay. So look at, look at this cell wave right here. This cell wave could not beat out this buy wave. Once you see that, always look left on the MACD. Once this sell wave couldn't beat out this buy wave, buyers are in control, stepping in. Okay. And then right here, look at RSI also creating divergence. And even mm -hmm. with even with this one, it was still a higher low, creating divergence. And then you get the cross, and then you could have got in somewhere right here. Right. So just a little bit more patience, and okay. you would have been good. Yeah, because I mean, you I had a little that. bit of of a drawdown right there. I did, and uh, and I this is <laughs> you know, on to what we were talking about. I wasn't quite sure where where I was thinking I was going to call it at this hundred. I was like, if it doesn't bounce here, then we're then we're back into this fib, and we're going to go all the way to the pocket. So. I was thinking the hundred there, um, and then this is also the ten SMA daily that that uh, yeah that dot, dash line yeah um, so, see but that's yeah. Q's that's Q's so Q's remember Q's always passes the level remember right here it passed the level yeah ES would have probably tagged the level and bounced yeah mm hmm. So just pay attention to that and then just start looking at the divergence. The divergence is definitely going to help you out and be a little bit more patient. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, so I could have waited for the Mac cross and then that also would have been breaking the 10. Uh, so I could have waited for the Mac cross, a full candle to clear the 10. And then taking it to VWAP. Yep. Okay. What's your uh? What's your in a winning trade? I mean, I've had the most success because <laughs> it's the most safe. Just straight up trailing my stop to the low of every single candle. The way that um, I do it is once it hits my first target, I'll put a trail stop. Other than about, that. I don't have a stop. So like if you're going for, for VWAP, you know, if it comes all the way up here and then comes all the way down to your stop, that's, you don't take anything? Uh, If if the if the candles begin to look weak, like it started getting weak right here and then right here, then I'll, I'll lock some in, maybe like right here. Okay. It's just candle development. You have to develop that, that gut algo candle development because over here on the one minute is this the one minute yeah these are both one minute on the screen so right here it started to look weak but then this candle right this candle went up it looked strength but then look at sellers came in right here yeah and then right here look starts to diverge and what happens starts to go down because these yep. candles look weak Yep, I see the divergence. But they look weak. Hey. But they look weak because it's close to this your Ichibiku or what what, what, what the <laughs> fucking cows called? Yeah, Ichimoku. Ichimoku, yeah, Ichimoku. <laughs> hey, can I say something real quick? Yeah, go for it, dude. Real quick. Um, like also remember how I was saying earlier fair value gaps to be either resistance or support? Yes. When they could like I've noticed when they close out, if they come back into the level, even though it closed out, there's still some sell, there's still some buyers here. And as you can see, once it reached that level, it shot up. And once it hit the the buy the sellers, it started flattening out a bit, like coming down. So even though they closed out, there's still some stuff there. So when yeah. it hits that level, no, like okay, even though it closed out the candle, the buyers the buyers are still in there. That's why they started falling down. And then once they try to come back up and create it, like I said, 
to me, this this red one is bigger than the second green one. Mm -hmm. So to me, this green one wouldn't have really mattered because this big red fair value was still strong compared to this green one. If the green one was a little bigger, I'd probably been like, okay, the buyers are strong, so we may break through it. But because the red fair value is bigger, it was, I, to me, it was still, in my opinion, like if I was trading, I would have been like, okay, sellers are still in control. Even looking at it with the MACD and everything, even though the levels are closed, they're still residuals. Makes sense. Okay. Good notes. Yeah, I think the getting in the the impatience. Um, which, by the way, I don't, you know, I think that's that right there is actually that's great advice that they hold through. And I'm glad I changed my settings on Ninja Trader now. Now I've got them. Uh, now I've got them coming all the way, so I'll be able to continue seeing them. Um, so now they won't disappear. Um, yeah, but yeah, this, this, this psychology, that's exactly what I need to work on. So I'm going to focus more on waiting until it's breaking above the 10. I'm waiting until I see the crosses, not trying to anticipate as much and then taking smaller profits off the move. Like that would have been fine if I, if I caught this right here. I mean, that would have been, a what about 28 to it been like 10 points 15 points so <clears throat> right there would have been good and then uh trade two um just just terrible i mean just terrible i can't believe i let myself do it so i'm just showing it uh just to just to feel bad about it um basically let me find what i even wrote about it I mean, it's awful. I can I, I can hear Semper's voice right now. It's been like this is fucking terrible, dude. Um... <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing, but y'all telling you it's serious. I mean, uh... this is like this is really. Uh, so I uh, let's see. Yeah, share this one. Uh, chase the fuck out of this. I was typing. Yeah, I was typing in the room how I thought we could make a new low before coming back up. Um. End result ended up being a win. So I got in and it's not as terrible as it looks because this is one. Um, there's all this this over trading. I didn't really I love blowing myself up live because I'm I'm gonna stop this. Well that's a rising wedge right there. Yeah. Very there it is. And I longed the top of it. And then look, and then a falling wedge, and then another rising wedge. Yeah. And I can see the, there was a great play right here. Draw your uh, fib from that high to that low, you know, and then you catch the uh, the pocket right here, you know. Yep, and you got the cross. Yep. You got the 10 break. And you, yep. got, you got the 50 profit. It walks up. What Remember, else are you saying, Semper? Elevator down, cycle up or stair step up. So elevator down. Yeah. Also, a uh, inverted head and shoulders. Yep, right here. Huh? They call it yep. inverse, but I like inverted head and shoulders better. Yeah, yeah you're doing an invert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, this is. Oh, go ahead. Sleeping upside down. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's white not... arrows. What are the white arrows? Are those the your exits? Arrows. The blue, uh, they're or yeah, the white ones. Them? Yeah, they're like a teal cyan. Those are the entries, and purples are exits. So basically, I got in. Now I suspected this was going to go down, but um, I also thought. So I I journaled um, really quick why I got in, and then I didn't. I meant to come back to fully explain it, but. Um, but this is one I got in. I was like, I think this is going to go up and I quote, don't want to miss it. So I got one and then I waited and picked yeah, up the stuff. second one. And then I picked up these three and then immediately dumped them when I was in profit. So 
I kind of like that. I like that I at least got out of my risk as soon as I I could. Um, I get well, not really, because as soon as I could would have been broke break of this trend line. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then scaled out more, and then saw that uh, that it looked like we were having some strength here. Then the the five. Yeah, the five Mac because that's ten fifty. Well, oh yeah, the five Mac crossed here at this point because that's eleven twenty five, right about here. So then the five Mac crossed. So then I uh, got out one, but then I saw this kind of flattening, um, and then re-entered just two for a little bit more profit. So it's like the trade was pretty good once I was down here. Um, it's just here's another impatient early entry. Yep. Especially look at MACD. When you got in, look at MACD. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. It's MACD widening. was diverging down, so it was RSI. Yep, and I can imagine narrating a short call for this where I say, Oh, we just broke we broke the ten. We closed under the ten. This candle didn't break above the ten. The RSI just broke into the lower half. The MAC is breaking into the lower half. Like uh, we broke to the bottom of the Ichimonako cloud, Ichibagako. <laughs> we broke that. We got a Doji, and then I could get in even even like here. Uh, well, this this would. This is the problem I have. Is I feel like if I don't get in early, I'm getting in late. Cause it's like. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, where, like, uh, where, where would the good entry be for the short? Maybe as soon as it breaks into the into the fifty and the Mac crosses. What's so this? Maybe on like. Yeah, right there. This candle right here. Would you get yeah. in like the close of it when the clo when it the cross is uh, guaranteed? Uh, well, that's where you'll get a little better because it's a lower high. So, is the fifty the yellow? Yeah. Uh the this is uh the hundred. Okay, so the 100. Oh, EMA. 100 EMA. EMA so... And then it got the 50s, the red. 50 SMA is the red, yeah. So the red is right here, right? Right where? These are... That is the 50. You could have done then the break the of the 50 SMA, but you had divergence right here. And you got the cross, so it probably would have lined up with the first red right here. Is that yep. one minute or five minutes? Okay. So sense. what yeah, what cool. what I usually used to tell what I used to tell um, lasagna cat because this is a leg pullback so this is a first leg is wait for this candle to create a pullback high so see how it created a pullback high and yeah. then you would enter one tick below the break of that candle so right it's here would have been the optimal entry. So as soon as the low of this candle breaks, so you almost have a you almost have a sell stop, right under. Yeah, right there. Well, I usually the, the body. Break. I usually just use the body. So one tick below this body right here. So right here, but see how it popped up and then it came back down. Yeah. Okay, that's that's perfect. And then what you would have used um this lower high or the previous high as a full stop? Uh for a tight stop, you could have used one tick above the pullback high. For a loose stop, uh, le a a little wider stop, you could have used this. And th that's something that Okay, let's, so let's just say for instance this was your first trade. Yep. So I would have stopped out right here. If you had a cushion, maybe you would stop out up here. Okay. I don't know why I can't take those yellow lines off. That helps a lot. Oops, awesome. Almost. I'm going to be like y'all when I grow up. <sighs> <laughs> well, like I said, I want to create you guys to be able to identify your own well, stuff. Like I said, I want to create hopefully. you guys to be able to identify. For sure. I mean, yeah, it's like just looking at this. I mean, this is you pointed out exactly what could have been identified. And these are the type of things that no matter what the market changes, like the, the structure will still be present. You know, mm -hmm. it's like there will be more fake outs. There will be more trickery, more wick outs and, and shit like that. And as but, soon as um, they pick up on our strategy, they're going to adapt it, you know, so we have to adapt with it. For sure. And it's you can always do that. Like if, if they start faking plays out and getting huge stop wicks, then place your buy down there. 
and just sell the bounce on on the on the stop eater, you know, shit like that. So, you know, human humans make the AI. So, and and we tell the AI, you know, oh, whatever. Let me not get go on a rant, but I just worry about. Uh, I wish I had started day trading like ten years ago. I feel like it was easier, but less knowledge available. So. Well, it was easier in a bull market. I know we're kind of in a bull market right now, but when we were in a bear market, like last year, yeah, when we were going down, it it, it was good. It wasn't good, like a lot of people blew up accounts, but it was good that we learned a bull market and a bear market. And now once we go back to a bull market, we're going to fucking slaughter the market. Yeah, 100%. And when we're, I, I love that actually, I'll be, as soon as the, as soon as we're in a, uh, it's very certain that we're in a market transition like that, I will be ready to absorb the knowledge that you gained last year. Because I was not here then. Um, so I'd love to hear about it once we once it becomes applicable. Or really before it becomes applicable, but you know, that's not why we're here right now. <laughs> learn, 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 absorb as much as you can and and then once we go back to a bull market, well technically we are, right? Because we're creating all time yeah. highs. Yeah. Uh, Speak there, there might be a big dip coming soon. Maybe by August or October. Yeah. Once they cut yeah. rates, remember, once they cut rates, it'll dump. You would think, well, why would it dump? Because that's what happened last time in 2008. When they cut rates, it dumped. You know, everyone is saying that, though. So it just makes me wonder if this time, if this time, it's kind of like one of those, um, like who are, they're trying to trap if everybody thinks something then the liquidity is too good to go it's too good to go the other like it has to go the other way i don't really know to it articulate has to go it the other way. way i don't really know um but uh but then if if they're all right you know so everybody's talking about it should go down when it cuts actually but uh then, then you think maybe they'll trap all those people and squeeze all those shorts, but then it's kind of like if ev if really everybody agrees that this is bad for the market and that it will go down, then then there is no opportunity to squeeze the shorts because there aren't enough buyers to support that. Yep. But, you always uh, have to think the inverse of what the market's doing. What is it? Yeah. Ask yourself, what is it setting up for? Yeah. Even like with data, why would they run it up before data? Right? Why would they run it up before that? It's like, I mean, it was a perfect gone day. That shit fucking took off. Never looked back. Oh, yeah. That was insane. That was really nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, uh, on that gone day, uh, my plan was, uh, um, I had some MES, I had one set here, I had one set here, and then I had like two set here. And then I was like, we are not going to come below pre-market. Um, so then I, I had a full stop here. Um, and the plan was just, just, just absolutely scream. Um, but this day was still good. Um, I passed an account this day. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty pretty easy just kind of waited especially for especially with that one day pass <laughs> yeah yeah calling all degenerates <laughs> um, uh, dude I was just imagine how many accounts were blown up that day oh my god thousands you know people probably and fuck it, it let me buy accounts. one like right, as soon as I blow it up let me buy another one like yeah it's 18 dollars yeah like it's 20 bucks it's crazy yeah. That's the idea, I guess. Yeah, it sure is. Attract more people so we could yep. screw them up. Yeah, at least they seem to be legit. They they did not have to reset those accounts when Trade of Eight had that oh, yeah. outage. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have to do that. And they and they know that that this it's kind of funny. It was like the universe testing them. It's like, all right, so you're getting very popular, you're getting a lot of customers now. Now, now you're 
this is this is going to be a lot of money that you know you have to reset these accounts a lot of accounts were blown but if you don't reset them oh, all these be customers outrage. are going to exactly outrage. yep especially and they, when and they having checking. evidence with YouTube he would have he would have put them on blast like no other yeah and that's that's kind of what i thought about um what i was i remember typing in the chat one day that i think um if you're an influencer or a youtuber um, they don't want that because that's that's the power that he held, holds over them a little bit. Like if they act wrong, uh, he can come in and let everybody know. And I think yeah. that's part of the reason they ban influencers and stuff as soon as they start posting because they don't want the power dynamic to be two ways. Yeah. They want to have all the control. Sure is. Yeah, but they but they did people good and they didn't even... They didn't even check. They they reset my account. I wasn't even in, or uh, the, it had. I was in a trade when it happened, but that wasn't. Well, I just got blown the fuck out because I was, <laughs> I, was yeah, I was being a bitch and didn't want to cut my loss. Um, and they reset my account, so it's you know like they they definitely did right. Yeah, I got I got to give it to them there, but um. But that's all I had For sure. on, on my recaps, and I will remember, and I'm going to be posting more of them, and uh, and you guys are going to see me grow into a more patient trader. Just like Easy did, just like Lasagna Cat did, like like mm -hmm. Easy, he had an arrow on it, like every candle. <laughs> yeah, I I could pull up, <laughs> and I was like, damn, dude, you're like chasing up and down, like it's all fucked up, but. <laughs> hey, yeah, you, I you learn. You, like I said, if you're getting more greens on longs, then just concentrate on longs. If you're getting more greens on downside of the, the shorts, then concentrate on shorts. Once you laser that shit in, then focus on the, like for the longest time, I traded only long. Like even as a lasagna cat, I would take like two short trades a year, and I would fucking lose my ass off on those two short trades. And I was like, fuck this, I'm just gonna do longs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but you have to be able to identify that. I can help you identify that, it, you know, by telling you, okay, 15 out of 15 out of 20 trades are green and they're all long and all your red trades are short. So, Hey, that's a sign right there. hundred percent. And I think part of the reason that I get, I say that too much. I think part of the reason that I get uh, the long trades actually do work out better for me is, is uh, like, I, I don't even think I'll be able to, uh, I don't think that data will be reliable for me until I fix my problem of uh, stop losses. Yep. Because my long trades are turning out better right now because I can get away with averaging into them um, because the market is more often long. So first I've got to fix my problem of taking of bag holding and then, and then I can use that data and that problem will be fixed. Like I'll... what do they say? At AA? The first solution to the problem is admitting that you're wrong. True. So you got that down. Now you got to work on it. True. Uh, True. And you uh, guys are going to see that. I'm glad I have you guys, you know, uh, I'm glad, glad, glad to be here and help you guys. Cause I've, I've been through it all, dude. I've blown up accounts, like personal accounts. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been through the hard, hard things. And that's why I kind of, I had to create a system. I said, there has to be a system. So I was like, put my business hat on. I got to treat this shit like a business. If I want this to be a career, I have to treat it like a business or else you're going to fail. What do they say? The first year, the first two years, you have 90% First two chance. years. You have ninety percent failing, or your business failing. So if you can make it out of the first two, but in trading you have to make it out of the first three years. It honestly takes about three years. I'm trying yeah. to cut that down to maybe one and a half, two years, maybe less. Um, but we'll see. That uh, sounds great. For, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Dell, for recapping your trades. Uh, Luna, I know you had a vacation or took some time off. I jump back in it and take some notes. Hopefully you took some notes this week and keep on grinding. We're going to keep these going. We only have one more week of finding your way, but Dell's already on the prop firms, uh, past the few on the prop firms. One, uh, one up, but Hey, learn from your lessons and fucking keep moving forward. 
And uh, I'm still going to be here to fucking guide you guys along and help you guys keep perfecting your, your trades or your strategy and your system. So, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. See you guys next week. I'm about to lose my voice. Um, Take care, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Thank you you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. You too, guys. Have a good weekend. You too. Have a good weekend.